Welcome. In this video, we will discuss the vital spinners, right? We just went through the Dirac equation, now finally in QFT. And now I want to introduce these very important vial spinners. So these will be important for several reasons. First, they will help us represent massless particles for when they have spin one half. That's going to be very important, neutrinos here being an example. It's also going to help us define chirality and helicity. So that's another that's actually one of the reasons, as we'll soon see, why we chose the chiral representations of the gamma matrices in the past video about the Dirac equation. And it's also going to be just generally useful as you then move forward since vial spinners tend to appear quite often. So even though our use of them may be somewhat limited right now in this context of Q or in QFT, in the future, this will be very useful as well. So it is a nice investment. So this block representation of the generators of the Lorentz algebra suggests to, well, some very smart people, I'm not one of them, I had to learn this, but it suggests to some very smart people that this Dirac representation may be reducible. And the reason why this is manifest, right, we can see that there are these little blocks here and there, right? This is because of the chiral representation that we chose. So this is why we chose it in the first place. It is very nice uh, for this very reason. So to actually see this, we can now write our Psi as being made by two components, Psi L and Psi R. This is going to be regarding left handedness and right handedness. And this is what we will call the vial spinner. Right, so this is a, this very famous vial spinner. So we will now use this to rewrite the Dirac equation. So we have I gamma mu del mu minus M psi. And we now plug or basically rewrite this a little bit. So we're going to do this in the following way. First, we're going to write the multiplication gamma mu del mu explicitly. So this is going to be, so this would be I gamma zero comma gamma I times del zero comma these spatial derivatives and minus of course m times psi i will write it as psi l and psi r very soon so now let's actually multiply through so this would be i and then we have gamma zero del zero plus i gamma i times the spatial derivatives minus m and then we let all of this act on Psi. Okay, so now let's plug in what our gamma zero and gamma i's are in our chosen chiral or vial representation. So here we would have i, and now, well, gamma zero is zero, one, one, zero, so this would be zero, del zero, del zero, zero. And then we have plus i, and now this is zero sigma i spatial derivatives minus the same thing, zero. And then we have minus m and all of this now multiplying our vial spinners psi l psi r. Okay, now we can combine our expressions here into one. So this would be factor i outside and we have zero, the zero plus sigma i times the spatial derivatives. And then we have del zero minus the same thing and zero again. And all of this minus m. And then we multiply by psi l and psi r, right? Our vial spinners. And now we can just go ahead and multiply through. So of course, maybe before that, it would be useful to keep in mind that this m has been multiplied by this implicit 4x4 four four identity matrix. This is in 2x2 two two block form. Keep that in mind. Um, so following that, we could rewrite this. 0 is going to be equal to i. And now I'm going to multiply the i inside because I want to combine this with the mass term. So we will have minus m i these, well, and then this entire thing. So I'm not really doing anything there. And down here, I also have I times the exact same term that was already there before and minus M. 
And now this is going to be what's multiplied by our little spinner. And that parenthesis is not necessary. Okay, so now we can find the Weyl equations, which is what we get when you multiply through. So that would be simply minus m times psi l, right? And then we get plus i, this entire thing, times psi r, and this has to be equal to zero. And then we get another equation when we multiply. So I'm just multiplying these two expressions, by the way. So this is i, uh, the zero minus sigma i, blah, 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 times psi l minus m psi r. So these are the Weyl equations. And note that they are coupled to one another. So we have psi l and psi r on both of them, right? So they are coupled to one another. But if we have a massless case, mass equals zero, then what do we get? We get this part is zero. So we simply have uh, the other one. So d zero plus sigma i, blah, blah, blah. That's an i, by the way. Psi r equals zero. And we also have the other one, which would be the same thing with a minus sign and also a psi l equals zero. So these are also the Weyl equations, but this time for the massless case. And you can see that they are now decoupled. One has the one is for the right-handed, one is for the left-handed, uh, and that's it. They are not connected in any way, which makes them much easier to work with. That's why I was saying that this, uh, these vial spinners are very useful when dealing with massless particles of spin one half in this case, because we are working with the Dirac uh, equation. So now we can clean up the notation if we introduce these things right there. So the four vector sigma and four vector sigma bar. Now this bar has nothing to do with the psi bar that we have seen previously. Um, this is simply the name that we give this because it has a, a minus and it kind of looks like you took the conjugate, right? Um, so using this, we can now clean up the notation. So our Weyl equations now look like this, right? For the massless case. I guess you could use it in the other case as well, but I'm going to write down the massless case here. So this would be, so we can now use this to clean up the notation on our Weyl equations. This is, of course, valid for the massless case as well, but I'm going to do this uh, for the general case. And then you just take mass equals zero and you get to the massless case. So by doing that, we get, well, um, let's maybe keep the multiplication out. So I'm going to go to this form of the Weyl equation, right? Not this one. So starting from there, I'm going to write this noticing the following this d0 plus sigma i well it looks like i had sigma mu multiplying our del mu right because if i have this this is simply this identity comma sigma i multiplied by d0 and the spatial derivatives and when i multiply through i get d0 plus our sigma i nabla which is exactly what i have up there and similarly, sigma bar mu times del mu, this is going to be the identity comma minus sigma i, and then I have d0 nabla. So when I multiply, I get d0 minus sigma i nabla, which is exactly what I have up there. So for that reason, I can now finally rewrite that, and I get that 0 is going to be equal to, and I have minus m, and here what we have is going to be this i sigma mu del mu down here i have i sigma bar mu del mu and minus m again and our vial spinners you could multiply through as well if, if you want it's just a bit more orderly i feel this like like this than like that but either way it's still the vial equations now with a bit of a different notation and again the massless case now we can just take it from here, right? So the massless case, this one, so massless, this is now going to be i, and this thing, notice, is simply sigma mu del mu psi r equals zero. And similarly, the other case is now i sigma bar mu del mu psi l. So again, it looks much neater with this notation, and it's going to be useful in the future since we're going to be uh, using this uh, a lot. 
So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon or my Ablebees. Now, Ablebees is a website where you can uh, go into my channel and create or support a petition for me to make a video on a topic that you want to see. It's a great way to get priority on something you may want to see and also support me in an additional way. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.